Hey, I'm Ryan Johnson, and I'm going to be talking to you about the Shrike today. So this is an Eagle Talon from the Afghanistan days. Uh, as you can see, it's seen a lot of wear and tear. The um, main pieces of feedback I was getting from guys was that they uh, wanted, first and foremost, an uh, insulated handle. As you can see on the old Eagle Talons, they had exposed steel. Um, and what we were wanting was something that was uh, completely insulated uh, for two reasons. One, to reduce the shock uh, transferred when you're hitting hard objects um, like steel, so actual vibration issue, and then two, electrical shock. Uh, we had a lot of guys in Afghanistan that were cutting power to buildings literally by taking their hawk and cutting the power going into the building, cutting it live. Uh, so uh, we wanted to be able to insulate it from actual shock and uh, electrical shock. Originally, what guys were doing were they were just wrapping the handle on the eel talon. Um, but uh, we wanted something a little safer than that. When you look at a Shrike, the cross section, you, this handle is over molded onto the steel. And the uh, end is actually left just the rubber and the end cap threads into that rubber. So there's an air gap so that you are non-conductive when you're cutting, if you're cutting through a wall, if you're making a door in a wall and you cut through live wire, that's not an issue. And you can cut power to something and it not be an issue. Um, all of that stuff is dangerous, uh, but we make it less dangerous by keeping this fully insulated. And we've had this lab tested, uh, full immersion test uh, for 30 minutes and uh, it'll take several thousand volts uh, and not bleed through. Anybody that, that follows me uh, on social media who have heard me talk about designing in the past knows that I'm a big fan of uh, the golden ratio and, and golden proportions. The Shrike is completely designed around the idea of golden proportions. The Shrike itself fits in what's called a root five rectangle. A root five rectangle, to take you to math class here, is a golden rectangle with its reciprocal rectangle attached to it. So in this case, the, the full rectangle width here, the reciprocal golden rectangle goes right here at this dividing line. And so part of it, it, it doesn't matter how high the handle goes up, but for me, for it to look right and, and also affects the balance, uh, that dividing line is right there on that root five rectangle. There's a golden rectangle everything's contained within golden rectangles. So from the edge of the handle out to the spike is a golden rectangle. From the edge out to here is a golden rectangle. Um, the curvature of the spike is part of a golden ellipse. The curvature of this beard is a part of a golden spiral. The cross section of the handle is a golden ellipse and it's tapered. Everything about it is done in those kind of proportions. And the reason is, is that those proportions are what you see in nature. That's what makes it harmonious. Uh, we see things in nature and things look right in nature to us. And if you translate that to the things you make, it makes them balanced. It makes them beautiful. Another feature that was a request uh, from the guys in Afghanistan fighting in the mountains is they wanted a way to sharpen this. Um, without having to carry anything extra. They wanted onboard sharpening. And so what we did was we incorporated into the handle a way of attaching a sharpening stone. And we offer several different types of sharpening stones that will come up in here. Uh, right now we use a file, uh, which is good because a, a file can get that bottom edge sharpened, uh, forward edge and spike all together. And it's a small footprint and very durable uh, but there's all kinds of other little sharpening systems that you can put up in here also ferro rods and things like that this end cap also protects the end of the handle and it also has a small knob uh, piece of feedback that actually came after we started putting strikes in iraq was the little nub at the end for breaking glass on windows um, that was an sop thing where uh, guys would be at a checkpoint and they weren't able to put in a deadly weapon through the car 
but they could put their handle of their strike, pop a window with the handle of their strike, but they still had it on on them in case they needed to, to use it. Another thing the strike excels at is weight distribution. So we have center of gravity. Uh, if you're just balancing it on your finger right here, actual center of gravity is, is out right in here in this little triangle. Um, center of gravity is super important when it comes to a tool that you're swinging. If you've ever used a hammer that was not balanced, you know what I'm talking about. It's just, it, it works against you instead of for you. Um, we use uh, pretty sophisticated software and computer-aided designing and tools to work that center of gravity where we want it. Um, and that's true with all of our tomahawks, but especially with the Shrike. When you're talking about cutting edges with the Shrike, um, of course, you've got the forward edge, the beard, and the spike. The spike is, is what's called a distal taper. It tapers in this direction, and it tapers in that direction. This makes it so that when you're punching into something, you're not getting snagged. Uh, once you go in, everything can come back out quickly and easily. Um, I think that's the number one problem you see with spikes uh, in the tomahawk market is that people design spikes that are, that are designed to get hung up in things, and that's, that's no good. This curvature also matches the, the radius of you holding the tomahawk and swinging it. So the idea of this radius is that it follows the arc of you swinging it. The forward edge is for your general chopping. And uh, one of the pieces of feedback we got, if you look at these really old Eagle Talons, they have a very uh, hard angle on that cutting edge. And with the strikes, we laid that cutting edge back. That's actually something that we learned from the Marsoc guys when they were testing them at Camp Lejeune. Um, this top piece right here is not a cutting edge, but what that is, is it's an absence of material, what it is. So when I chop into something, especially if I'm, I'm slicing into something, the material up here creates drag. And so, so that, that big square cross section will create drag. When we remove that right there, that allows the cut to be more efficient. The beard is probably the, the most overlooked part of the tomahawk. Uh, the beard allows you, when you cut into material, to cut your way back out of material. So um, people use these to cut into walls, for instance, like drywall, um, uh, block wall. And no matter what you use, uh, there's always a chance of getting stuck in there. And the beard allows you to cut back through, uh, making it quicker. The beard also, from a close quarter combat perspective, anything I hit with the tomahawk, I can pull and rip. So a lot of the combatives that people are taught to, to use, the tomahawk translates well in those combatives as far as if I'm going to make a block, I can use the tomahawk as a block and then hook people either with a non-lethal hook or a lethal hook. In combatives, you know, for, for centuries, thousands of years, people have tried to overcome the natural aversion to stab. Uh, when you read On Killing by Grossman, he even talks about how the uh, Romans had to teach people to, to get away from slashing and to stab. Slashing uh, is our natural tendency, is to swing things to hit people with. And the tomahawk does an interesting thing. Uh, you know, stabbing and Blunt force trauma are the name of the game when it comes to close quarter combat. Uh, the tomahawk takes your natural tendency of swinging and slashing and translates that into stabbing and blunt force trauma. So when you swing the tomahawk, it actually does stab and penetrate. It does cause uh, blunt force trauma. Um, it's, a, it's pretty effective in taking our natural tendencies that work against us and improve it. You know, there's all kinds of complicated tomahawk fighting styles and stuff. And I always laugh. I'm, I find it kind of humorous because I've heard dozens of stories of guys using tomahawks uh, in combat. And they're all the same exact story. Here's the story. Somebody will say, well, I was in a stack. We were clearing a building and I'm holding rear security. And all of a sudden, 
a guy comes out of nowhere and grabs my buddy's rifle and I can't shoot the guy off my buddy. So I pull my strike out and brain the dude. That's every story. And, and I'll come up with the follow up question. Well, what'd you do after that? Well, he was dead. We just kept on clearing the building. Tomahawk fighting doesn't have to be complicated. 